Hey, BYR Nation, Episode 8, Desperate Times, is locked and loaded and ready to go. And trust me when I tell you that things are about to kick up into an even higher gear with more drama, more laughs, and more personal humiliation for me. And that's all I have to say. I have nothing to say about liking or subscribing or donating or writing comments or checking out links. None of that. Talk amongst yourselves. Oh, I'm not exactly sure what you're doing, but it's your own time you're wasting there, Paul. I'm not exactly in a hurry to go back to the motel. Oh, come on. Guys, where's your sense of humour? Where, where is your sense of humour? I got it. I got it. If I'm right, if I'm right, this solution will have the potential of being even better than the original idea. I'm not, I'm not, not counting my chickens before they hatch just yet, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure this is gonna work. It's gonna speed us up and it's gonna be still badass creative. So the only thing I gotta check on is whether if Sunjay and Rajma like this idea, then all of this could have been for a reason, which would be the best possible scenario. Maybe I pulled another one out of the hat. I don't know, I don't know, not yet, but we'll see. God, I think it'll work, I think it'll work. I got it, gather around. The answer to this dilemma has been staring us in the face the entire time. We're gonna take the wedge decking pattern that we did on this staircase and we're gonna use that and transfer it all the way around this lower level deck. Huh? We're gonna continue these spines. We're gonna go one spine, two spine, three spine, four, and it's gonna be a super creative look. It's gonna be a hell of a lot of work, but it's gonna be productive work we're not waiting on stuff cooking in an oven. Huh? Buddy, you had me at productivity. <laughs> and Sunjay and Rajma are cool? I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure of that part. You know, the curved deck boards would have looked cool. I'm sure this will look pretty good too, but all roads lead to the golf simulator. Oh my God. Okay, so we can actually have this done in two days instead of two more weeks, right? Did he just say it was gonna take a couple of days? I don't think he knows what a day is. Hey, that's not true. I know what a day is. I just forget how many hours go into each one, but that's not the point. What is the point is that this new decking pattern is going to rock. As you walk around the bridge deck now, not only will the wedge cut boards all point to the waterfalls in the pond, which is a nice touch, but by continuing the pattern up into the lounge area, this design really will give Sanjay the look of a defined path that leads to year-round golf. Also, by having the boards now run more perpendicular to the house, the relatively narrow bridge deck will now appear much wider, on top of looking totally badass. All right, we've got a number of days of really, really good weather, which means that the mood is up, right guys? Yeah because we finally had some pretty decent production. So you can see the bridge deck is looking awesome. We've got all these wedge cuts, which has taken a lot of math uh, because we have to find our center point in the middle of the pond to be able to lay all this out, which is kind of hard to do since it's in you know, a pond. But we are uh, gonna be working more on this today. It's gonna be really great to see this done, but we have nature cast in today because we are finally gonna be able to start assembling our outdoor kitchen. And we gotta do that in a hurry because we've got snow on the way. So we're about to be blanketed in more snow, but I'm telling you right now, I don't care because this train has finally gotten moving and nothing's going to slow us down now. How's it going, Mike? It's going well. How are you? Good to see you. You're back. We are back. All right, so, uh, hey! We got the goods here. Yeah, that looks like the right color. You sure? Yeah I'm, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure this time. All right, good to hear. Now that we have the correct color for our nature cast cabinets, we can focus on the finer things, like some very cool customized features. Well, this is uh, this is where the tandoori cooker is gonna go. Nice. And then, uh, so that drawer comes out the bottom, right? Yeah. We'll, we'll handle But that's, right, so that'll come out. The tandoori cooker will be here, and then you step up, and you can bring the skewers up. No way. Yeah, isn't that cool? It is. Let's see. Okay. Let's put, a, let's put an outdoor kitchen together, shall we? Loving it. It's about time. With all of the drama this particular area of the project has created, 
be it incorrect cabinet colors or having to underpin through the deck, it makes sense that the design for this outdoor kitchen has an element of drama to it as well. But it's not just about putting cabinets in place to match the curved deck, the challenge is to install the posts for the overhead pergola at the same time. If these posts are out of place by even half an inch, it will affect the install of our DCS appliances. So there's no room for air. So we've got more of our wedges cut here. We've got the math all sorted out, but uh, once we've actually got the, the boards cut, it's about, it's about cutting them in such a way that they remain absolutely dead straight. We got our cordless track saw from DeWalt, which is amazing because it means we don't have to be tripping over any cords. But in order to be able to make this install in such a way that the seams between the two cut boards looks like it's not even there, our levels are our best friends because we gotta make sure those boards are straight. But uh, as you can see, in the midst of crazy production, they don't get the treatment they deserve. I don't even know how this happened. Anyone? Maybe we do know how it happened. You can't fool us, Polly. We're on to you. But I won't judge too harshly, as I'm about to partake in some deception of my own. But at least with what I'm doing, no tools will be harmed. All right, so in order to create our curved outdoor kitchen, um, but yet using square boxes, uh, we got to use a little bit of trickery. So as you can see here, we've got square components. We've got the grill, we've got the side burner, we have the fridge, we have the tandoori. These are all square components, but we're going to align them in a way that it looks curved. So the filler strips are really helping us. You can see how the angle slightly changes as we're moving along. But once the countertop goes on, it's going to be a nice curved face all the way across. That takes care of the front side. You can see we got the posts going in for the pergola. We're gonna be mounting other posts in the back. And what that's gonna allow us to do is to mount the same siding that we're gonna use in the four season room to curve all the way around the backside. Again, creating that wonderful illusion of the curve. So uh, basically it's taking straight boxes and making circles out of them because that's what we do. We like to defy the laws of physics. Piece of cake. One of the reasons why I wanted to bend 20 foot length deck boards was to be able to avoid splices in the long length boards. So a splice looks like this. You can see that this is called a butt joint. And when you have a butt joint over time, you can get expansion and contraction and that seam becomes really obvious. So now that I have eight foot boards only bent, which are beautifully bent in the Trex oven, um, I have to now come up with a creative way to be able to allow those splices to happen. So what I've done throughout our lower level deck with all our wedge cuts, I've incorporated the island mist color as spines. So the island mist color is in a spines in multiple areas all the way across. And what that's gonna allow me to do is once I cut these in, the spine is going to break up those two sections. And then to make it even cooler is I'm going to extend the spine right to the edge of the deck. I'm gonna do a mitered cut. I'm gonna do a 45 degree bevel on a solid board and I'm gonna run that right down the front face, which will also allow me to avoid having any splices in my 11 and a quarter inch facial board. So basically it's allowing me to create splices, but in a really creative way, that's gonna look badass. So uh, I have everything marked out, ready to go. We are gonna be cutting out the, uh, the edges of our spines to be able to put our curved borders in. So I really only have one shot of doing this. So uh, focus time. After installing all of your deck boards, the last thing you want to do is make a mistake on your cut to install your border. Unless, of course, you feel like replacing a bunch of expensive deck boards. I, for one, feel like I've destroyed enough of those on this project, hence the reason I'm cutting this one personally. That way, if I screw it up, I'll have no one to blame but myself. Once this cut is made and our border pieces go in, it is a very satisfying part of the project that not only gives a great sense of completion, but it also just looks so damn good. After all, a deck without a border is like hanging a beautiful picture on the wall of your home without a frame. You can quote me on that. I, th I thought we'd pull away from the job site, just out here in a nice tranquil environment, because you are, you guys are building outdoor cabinetry that's made for the outdoors in environments such as these, which, which is quite tranquil. For sure, yeah. All right, so we're going to get the, the outdoor kitchen in place, which is going to be uh, fantastic, but I almost, now that I'm out here, I almost feel like going for a bit of a nature walk. So, uh, so do you, uh, do you, do you use moisturizing cream or are you, uh, I, I do. Do you? Yes, I do. It's been, yeah, I, I exfoliate. I've learned how to do that from one of the other guys. I've been trying this, uh, cucumber extract under my eyes. Okay. But when you're out here, you 
you, you got to be careful. I don't want to. I don't want my face to look like an old leather catcher's mitt, you know, too oh, soon. My, my wife, she swears by the apple cider vinegar. I use that. Really? It burns a little bit, but as far as I'm concerned, if it doesn't hurt, it's not doing you any good. Now that the material for our pergola has arrived, it's time to take five so we can refocus and put together a solid plan of action to get it built before dark. All right. So now that uh, now that this stuff is here. Uh, We've got a major sequence of events that we got to follow. So, you're gonna get those boards stained. You're gonna do that in the four season room. We've got the uh, we got the we have curved beams we got to build that have to get curved. We've got uh, we've got rafters we got to get up in place. We got a roof we have to design. Who wants coffee? Okay. So we got the stain we got the stain covered. We have the posts extended. You and I are gonna work on the curved beams, getting the rafters ready, getting all the, the all the, the math uh, corrected. All right, so you guys, you guys got it? Good to go? All right, so we gotta follow the sequence of events exactly. Let's get the show on the road. Hey, did you guys want the material? Oh yeah. Yeah, we might need this. That's a good point. Or we all just really wanted a copy and we're delaying having to haul material right away. I guess you'll never know. Here, I'll grab the other end of that. All right, things are going on beautifully with our outdoor kitchen. We got the nice curved back edge, which is looking really, really sharp, and the components up top, which are almost complete. But today is all, is all, is all, is all. Today is all, is all, is all, is all. But today is all going to be about our wild and wacky pergola, which is going to have rafters flying up in all directions and have a roof to keep you from getting wet while barbecuing in the rain, which is great. So uh, we got a number of things that have to take place. First, we need these curved structural beams to go in. And that's the template being laid out here on the floor as we speak, which is gonna mean we're gonna be then cutting up laminated plywood to create that structural beam. So this has gotta take place while at the same time, Mikey is inside our four season room in the warmth because we've had to heat the place because that's where we're doing all the staining to get those rafters ready to go up in the place. So uh, a lot of action going on to create something wild and wacky like I do. And so we're, we're kind of making this from scratch uh, we're basically doing a glue lamb beam. So what we've done is we've taken a, a curved 2 by 12 and bent it around a radius that we made from a template. And this is not a structural beam in and of itself because it's a curved piece. So we've taken the structure out of it. But then we've taken about uh, a number of sheets of 3 8 ply and we're going to put three layers on either side of this curved beam. And then we're going to bolt the whole thing together. And that's what's going to give us the rigidity of a structural beam with a wild curve to it. So uh, it means a heck of a lot of glue, a heck of a lot of screws, a heck of a lot of patience. But when the whole thing is said and done, well, it's gonna be a curved beam. I think that just goes without saying. Aerial structures are the most visible components of a project, which is why they are where I will typically have the most creative fun. With so many curves on this project, this pergola would not fit into the design without them. We are, uh, we're done our first big beam, and uh, we have our posts in place. And now it's just a very small task of taking what will now be a very heavy curved beam and transferring it from its home here to its new home over there while climbing up ladders without falling and hurting ourselves or tearing ligaments or ripping spleens or things like that. Which, uh, it's what we do. It's what we do. <laughs> yeah, just go, 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 go a third of the way, back a little bit, give me some weight. Transfer the weight. Look at that, it's actually not as heavy as I thought. It's a piece of cake. Once these curved beams go into place, an important element of the design will start to materialize. That was truly missing from what was here before. And that is to create a raised vista from the grill of the outdoor kitchen where you can take in the beautiful backdrop of the property. Leveling and positioning of both curved beams is crucial as our angled rafters will sit on top and they all must maintain the exact same pitch. An easy feat if your beams are straight, but not quite as simple if they are curved. Now that that's done, it's time to finally bring in the bling, our DCS Outdoor Appliances. The minute these babies go into place, there will be no doubt that we are truly making one hell of an outdoor kitchen. Don't let the snowflakes fool you, the air is getting warmer, and with the return of warm air means the return of Troy. And Troy, we missed you, buddy. He's gonna be moving that hot stuff out of the way so we can finally get these rocks that are over there and start to position them around the, the underside of the skirting area here, behind the barbecue area, because that's where our hot tub is gonna be going, and none of that can happen until the stones get moved. But the real priority for today is getting our countertop templated, because uh, 
it's a complicated countertop, to say the least. But you can see right now, as Paolo's getting stuff set up, we have our DCS appliances in place. It's looking really, really sweet. We got the, the nature cast cabinetry, we got the rafters in place, and you can start to see behind me how the, the vista is now framed in, and it's much more inviting, and all this open space is here for our future dining table. So uh, we got some major lasering to do, and we got Mo here to do it. And action. Action. And action. Turn. And a couple more. Action. And paw. And paw. And paw. Cut. Yeah, I'll explain all of that in a minute. But as I mentioned before, Troy is back. And that means stuff can get done that nobody does better than him. And that's moving rocks. Now that we are no longer needing to jackhammer frozen rocks out of the ground, we can start to remove and sort through all of the armor stone that we plan to repurpose from the beginning. Not only is this cleanup going to allow me to design what I have in mind for the side of the house, but also for around the new hot tub area. I'm not going to lie though, I'm really starting to want to get behind the controls of his big toys. Why does he get to have all the fun? But that'll have to wait. I have other things to think about today, like making sure I stay on the good side of Muay Thai Mo. All right, Mo, you have uh, you've done a lot of countertops with me before, but mm, this one should challenge even you. And uh, well, I know you're the guy to do it, but do how it. how do you do this? How do you template a curved countertop? So we do this with our digital templator. It's a laser templator. We put all these points over here. It gets all the points from the front, the back. Once it goes into the computer, it goes on AutoCAD. Put the slab on our machine. Our machine reads that file and cuts nice curve. So, okay, so we'll take these measurements now. It gets transferred to the computer. It tells you what to cut, and then we're gonna go down to Apex. We're gonna go to your shop. Yep. So what I wanna know is uh, how does a guy who has this, this crazy back history doing uh, Muay Thai fighting end up doing custom countertop fabrication? Countertop is granted a marble very strong, Muay Thai fighting very strong. Ah. They connect. They connect. <laughs> So here's a question though. So that the beard you got going on there. Yeah. I mean, uh, I can't I can't grow a beard like that because my face gets too itchy and and, it, and, and the gray looks really good by the way. You, you look like a you look, you look like a George Clooney. Wow. Uh, you're welcome. Yeah, do you mind if I? Yeah, right, go ahead. Look at that. It's pretty soft. See, it looks like it would be like a Brillo pad, but it's really really soft. Do you yeah. use oil on that? Yes, I do. You do. Lots of it. But man, could you could you have a beard like that doing Muay Thai fighting? Would guys be grabbing onto the beard? No, no. Muay Thai does no grabbing. They don't do that? No, no. They're, Nobody would dare to touch them. They're Muay Thai fighters, they're classy. Yeah, we don't touch beards. Yeah, they don't touch them. Yeah. I, I intentionally shaved this morning just in case that wasn't true. Yes, you know, yeah. You, you know, when you now grab, I can't grab you, you can't right? Grab anything. But I can. You, you right. could, you could do that. He's frightening me. <laughs> well, maybe just a little frightened. But what would really frighten me is if I had to take the measurements of this crazy curved countertop myself. Meanwhile, now that the stones are all cleared, we are finally able to start the framing of our shed, which will house our electrical panels and provide some much needed storage. And Troy is excavating for our stairs that would lead to the hot tub from our future walkout. But as one piece of technology is doing its job, transferring all the points of our countertop onto the computer, I'm about to have a blunt reminder about the importance of maintaining some of my own crucial equipment and potentially send our productive day into a tailspin. All right, so here in the hot tub zone, one of the predominant visuals is gonna be the back of this deck. And because of the height, what I really don't wanna see is skirting that drops, you know, three and a half feet to four feet to the ground. And that's where the stone comes in. So Troy's brought in the stone and the stone is gonna be put underneath the deck and layered up so that the skirting drops down and cuts into the very, very top of the stone, looking like it disappears into the rock. So Troy's already laid out a number of uh, armor stone pieces here, and it's not just a question of taking these rocks and shoving them into place. As you can see, he's already started chiseling the front to create a really nice rugged natural look, and he's gonna be cutting the sides of them to make them tie together like a puzzle piece, which takes a little bit of artistry hey, and man, a lot I'm, of time. So, sorry. so what's I'm really gonna sorry. help is when we start seeing this put into- Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. Right now. Yeah, sorry, man, I apologize. Is, is it done? Yeah. All right, just one sec. Hey, Doug. I don't think it's good. Yeah, man. No, no, it's good. We're working away. We're working away. You know, and I know what we're what I'm hoping to hear, and you're going to tell me what it really is going to be. How long? How long? How long are we waiting for this part? So two weeks, which really means it's likely going to be three. 
Did you see Paul's brain melt right there? To be honest with you, I took a little bit of joy out of that. Just a little bit. Two, three weeks. I'm telling you. How many projects have we done? Well, we have curved boards. We have never, ever had the issues that we've had on this project when it comes to curving boards. Having Paul stop while he's going is kind of like a guy in the woods taking a leak and all of a sudden telling him to stop midstream because people are walking by. That's pretty hard to do. I've been staring at this project now for two months in a typical deck layout that we originally had planned. This would have been done in two or three days flat. We're now moving into two months. The Trex oven has been a champ for us. We have been bending all the boards that you have been bent have been bent by that oven except for two from that thing. A couple weeks ago, that breaks down on us. We can't wait two, three weeks, man. We, we, uh. I'm going on vacation, bro. It sounds nice. So I knew that that phone call wasn't going to go well. Uh, Paul's always the eternal optimist. I'm more the realist. I've been bending boards on decks for almost two decades. I have never run into the problems I've run into on this project. Mind you, I haven't necessarily tried to do it in the middle of a polar vortex before, but say la vie. You know I'm, well, I'm not gonna say I'm always a man of good news, you know, cause I sometimes like to dabble in the bad news, but what do you got? this time, I'm a man of good news. Got this two months ago, it just literally came out of nowhere. These guys are mobile bending solution and uh, Paul wasn't receptive to it initially. You know, I slid it to him, he slid it back. It was this crazy dance back and forth. Do you remember when we were looking at this bad boy? But I can tell you this, I would never ever have expected to be calling in another party to come and bend boards for me. It's kind of like, can you please hold my hand? They, uh, they're willing to come out here tomorrow and, uh, and start bending for us. I know that you had hesitations to it. He is going to have to listen to me on this because honestly, we have no other alternative. Paul, get him in here. I don't, that's fine. I'm not even gonna argue. Just get him in here. This would normally be a major kick in the ego, but at this stage, I'm kind of left without ego or pride. I just need these boards bent. I have failed in my endeavor. Cue cool walk-in music. Say hello to the boys from Custom Curve. They're young, they're fast, and they smell like smooth efficiency. They come armed with heating blankets that I could have been using from the beginning if I wasn't so stubborn about doing things my own way. The older I get, the more I realize that adding to our extended team by bringing in other talented artisans on projects only makes us better, rather than letting the ego rule by stating that you need to do everything yourself. Well, actually, Steve said that, and my ego may or may not have told him to stuff it. I can't really remember. What's important now is that Dennis is here. With only a few boards to go and the sun going down, not only are we accomplishing the task at hand, but we are also getting to know another very talented craftsman who shares our same passion. I can't help but feel like the sun is also setting on what has been a very humbling chapter for me, but at least one thing has been proven wrong. You can, in fact, teach an old dog new tricks. And speaking of tricks, I'm just dying to know how Mo is gonna cut this crazy curved countertop for me, so I've decided to see for myself. And I think a day away from the site will do me some good. What's up, boys? Mr. Bob. Mo, how are you, sir? Good, buddy, how you doing, you? man? How you doing? Bruce. Nice to see you. How are you? I'm good, let's have some fun. Let's do this. I always love seeing how things are made. So days like today are like field trips when I was in school. But like I was back then, just because I'm learning doesn't mean I'm not gonna have some fun, particularly when big machines are involved. But we'll get to that. There it is, right here. It's curving this that I can't wait to see. Yeah. I mean, it's, just, it's a crazy thing, but now, how are we gonna curve this? That's what I wanna know. Oh, with our baby over there with the uh, CNC, uh, you know, a bridge saw, we're gonna put it all together on the program. I'm gonna show you how it's done, run it, and it does all the magic. So that's that's all being cut with a it's a it's a finger bit. It's a finger bit with a diamond uh, tip. With a diamond tip. Yeah. They're called industrial diamond segments. Industrial diamond segments. Yeah. You want to see how it looks like? Yeah, you got one. Yeah, right here. And that's it there. There it is. This is the shaft. So industrial diamond segments yeah. are infused. embedded inside. Yeah. Those are all those Four are all little little diamond segments. And well, well, I mean, I know that diamonds are like the. They're, you know, it's the hardest substance on earth, right? And so this just rotates, this just rotates like crazy and, and slowly 
cuts those curves. So de depending on the material, yeah. you have to, there's a special, uh, there's an RPM, the speed, uh, it comes into effect. So there's like an algorithm sure. for, for every blade, depending on the, on the, on the stone you're I mean, cutting. I mean, for the bit, talking about blades, they're actually here. I mean, I'll show you something. This is like a porcelain blade right here. <laughs> Looks like you're about to show me a record from the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what? what? Boop, boop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but okay. it's not. There's a diamond blade. This I can tell because it says it right here. Yeah. Anytime I've talked to any guy about a diamond blade, normally there's like a, yeah, it's got a diamond blade on it. And then they mm -hmm. beat their chest like a like the alpha male ape yeah. of, the, of a group. I can see that there's diamond fragments in this, mm -hmm. but it's not like it's an entire diamond. Otherwise I could take this record and just run away and then buy an island. Is so it it's industrial diamond segments that are, uh, but it is actual diamonds, but it's not the ones that you're gonna make a yeah, ring out of. Yeah, exactly. So it's ti it's tiny diamonds. So don't try to steal this from me because I'll catch you. You, know, you I, I believe you. Okay. I want I want to see both of these at work. Yeah. Well, I want to see both of these at work. Let's. So we, are we ready to put the slab on the table? Let's go. It's time. Diamond, you're about to meet stone, but this is no ordinary stone. This slab from Lapitec is not your typical countertop material. When you are installing a countertop outdoors, you are talking about a horizontal surface that is going to take a beating from the elements. So I want a countertop that can stand up to just about anything. All right, Bruce, so now that we got the Lapitec slab on the table, I mean, I can see just how consistent it is all the way across. But what, what I'm confused about is, this is a man-made stone. That just seems like it's the work of God that you guys are meddling with. Like, how do you do this exactly? Well, they're close, but they're not God. So it's natural minerals. Right. It's a kiln-fired process, like a kiln, like you would make pottery type process. And using minerals. Using the minerals. Okay. And it's heated to 2200 degrees Celsius. Because 2200 degrees, it's hot, but that doesn't sound like, you know, the surface of the sun. But it's pretty hot. But it causes the minerals to fuse and create like that consistent surface. It causes that and also closes the pores. So you're, t I mean, I can see the way the water is just sitting on this without sucking into it. But I mean, what else can this thing endure? You can uh, spray paint it. Uh, you can pour red wine. Uh, you can put acid on it if you're so inclined to do that. Uh, if I'm wandering around with some acid, I can just go chuck. No worries. That's right. Yeah. What about Chlorine, blood? Bleach, blood? Blood? Not a problem. Not not that I would be considering no. it, but well. you never know. What if I was to uh, drive, uh, like, do a brake stand in a car and just <laughs> over the top rubber? Not a problem. Yeah. What about bullets? <laughs> Haven't tried bullets. Haven't tried bullets. Lava? Have you tried lava? Haven't tried, uh, haven't tried lava. Haven't tried lava? No. All right, so, I mean, you do have some more testing to do. So now I see, I'm seeing the, uh, so the finger bit. Yeah, so the finger bit goes here. Usually okay. a blade comes here, but when you're putting a finger bit, you gotta take the blade out, and then that's where the finger right, bit is. Right, so this thing, will, this thing will rotate. Oh yeah, it rotates. The way around. And, it's, it's, and oh, these are the water hoses. Water keeps the bit cool. Yep. That's keeps the, keeps the diamonds, keeps the diamonds. Diamonds. Diamonding. Diamonding. And, uh, <laughs> And, That's it, a good way to and say it keeps it. it keeps the dust down. Yes. Well, we have uh, we got a beautiful looking surface. Now we're going to see how we can cut some curves into this, which is kind of that'll be fun. It will be fun. I didn't make it an easy countertop, but that's you know I wouldn't be why me would if, you? I wouldn't be me if I didn't. <laughs> All right, let's see this thing get cut. All right. Awesome. As I watch our custom countertop being cut with ease with Mo's help, I definitely wish that I had listened to Steve and reached out for help sooner regarding my board bending problem. So I think it's safe to say that I've experienced some personal growth over the last half hour. But I think I'll let Marilyn Monroe sum it up for me when she said, I believe that everything happens for a reason. People change so that you can learn to let go. Things go wrong so that you can appreciate them when they're right. And sometimes good things fall apart so that better things can come together. It's words like these that lead to Elton John writing songs about you. The answer was staring me in the face. It's staring me in the face. The Oh my god. Oh, I'm telling you. I could just do this all day. I could do this all day. I don't know what it is. Seems like he's a safer driver than Troy. Oh, he's amazing. 
All right, Bruce, so now that we got our Labatex slab, I, I, nothing like screwing up the brand name. <laughs> Keep that for the blooper reel. <laughs> Hey, my beautiful BYR fans, I would love to hear your thoughts on my decking solution in the comments section below. As always, a big fatherly forehead kiss of appreciation be bestowed upon the brow of Matt Eckhart Tolle Mantega. And definitely check out the links below for my boys at Lapitech, whose countertops I have at home, and the boys from Apex Fabrication, who take those countertop slabs and work acts of sorcery on them. So here is to Bodacious Bruce and Mighty Mo, who are not only this episode's sponsor, but, uh, also just fine examples of how bearded and non-bearded men alike can both exude equal amounts of raw male testosterone. See you in episode nine. Oh, uh, yeah, at this point, I have no read on you. Are you actually wanting it to be weird? Does it, does it make you feel uncomfortable, Bill? Uh, I'm actually not comfortable having my name on this whole thing anymore. I, I honestly oh. don't even know why you asked me. Oh, come on, don't be like that. Don't be like that.